What's up, YouTube? We are about to go live in a minute. All we are waiting for is for our little uh, notifications to go out, and uh, we'll be with you shortly. So you want to know how to fix knee pain or rehab a knee injury or make sure that you never get a knee injury. Well, today we're going to go pretty deep into the topic of arthritis and clinical diagnosis and osteoarthritis. So there's a lot of people that have asked questions about this. We've got answers. Make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to also talk about the biggest mistakes that people are making when training their knees or rehabilitating them. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hey everyone, in case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. I'm one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and co-creators of the UMS Unify Movement System where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise formerly known as the FMS, but now the UMS. And this is Phil White, our resident physiotherapist and uh, all-round smart dude, who is here to keep me and my brother sane. So much so that he's kicked Yanni off the show today because he was a little bit sick and tired of his insanity. And the last over. couple, of, Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it'll just be me here. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're all getting ousted. Now, Yanni and Richard have got man flu, serious man flu. Yanni's behind the uh, camera today, and uh, I've got a day off, so you're going to have to listen to me today. How are you feeling today, Phil? Very well. Yeah? Yep. Can ready, be back. Ready, ready, ready for action. And you've got the mic, dude. So it looks yeah. like uh, yeah, yeah. you're going to be up, listening to Phil today. I'm apparently outside. on the guinea pig. Yeah, and if, if, it, if there is any issues in the sound, just do let us know because that has come up in the past with me particularly. So yep. apparently I'm a softly spoken dude. Yeah. I yeah. believe that. Yeah, Sounds that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> I remember when my balls dropped as well. So don't yeah. worry. Still waiting. <laughs> One day. Um, okay. So if you're just tuning in, make sure that you hit the like button and uh, leave a little comment with your name and where you're watching from because we want to know who you are, where you're from, so that we can stalk you. No, we just want to uh, give you a shout out and know where our audience is from and it also really helps our algorithm. Anyway, we're gonna get out on the gym floor now and we're gonna show you the exercises that we're doing today. And uh, then we're gonna come back in here and talk about the key insights of uh, osteoarthritis, what you need to know about it, what you need to know about diagnosis, about not getting diagnosed properly, the difference between clinical diagnosis and also through uh, what a radiolo radiological diagnosis. A lot of cool things coming up, so make sure you stick around. Let's get out on the gym floor. All right, here we go. We're not oh, already. It's not ready. Look yeah, at that. Let's sit right uh, down. Okay, look at yeah. that. This is what happens when Yanni uh, is yeah, behind the camera. Oh, now we're ready. Oh, now we're ready. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Exciting. <laughs> All right, and we're off. Okay, so heading out onto the gym floor. What we've got is going to probably look a bit similar to what we were doing yesterday. So again, with all the, the ways that we teach the exercise, it's all about the regressions and then progressing from there. So uh, yesterday we were running through the step ups, and now we're going to be working through a step down. Now it might seem sort of a bit funny that a step down would be a, a progression, but for anyone who's had knee pain before, you've probably realized that it's when you're walking down the stairs that it really gets you, and that's because it is uh, more load through your knee because those eccentric contractions, so slowing down against gravity, is actually gonna be putting even more force through your knee. So that's why the step down is a, um, is a progression here. So with Rad demonstrating here, how he's gonna do it is he's bending down and coming back up. He's putting all his weight down on the floor there, so that's gonna be a good way to just practice the movements to start off with. But now, the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna uh, come forward slightly on the stool, head down just like yesterday with the heel touching the ground, keeping the foot standing on the, um, yep, and back up. So just trying to not take all the weight in the heel, just touching down and coming back up. So at the moment, he's letting his uh, toes pop up there and that's fine there. For some people, um, if you're going into that full knee bend, might be um, a little bit aggravating. So if you can now sh show with the uh, foot flat on the there and coming back up. So when you're doing that, you're putting a bit more weight through your glutes there and coming back up. Now from the side there, that's a, um, we're getting a good angle of just how much of the knee bend we're getting there. Now if, uh, 
one important consideration to have. Yanni has uh, run away from the mic, so I'm going to be behind, <laughs> behind the mic and the cam. So now, looking from the front, if one thing that, just like yesterday, that we really want to make sure we're doing right is getting the hips nice and level and the knee nice and level. Now, he's doing, yeah, here's an example of uh, what not to do. So it's so common but that this, people... But this happens. This is yeah. what people do. People, people do that. Their knee goes in and they find it really hard to, uh, to counteract that. So it's really and the important. Other, and the other thing with exercise, people often are like, okay, I have a set amount of time to do things. I've got to get through all my sets and reps of everything. So I'm going to do things as quickly as possible and they completely miss the point of the exercise. So mm -hmm. uh, it is much more important to slow down and uh, get the movement right, especially with all this where you're working on knee tracking, you're working on that, on that hip positioning there. So slowing down and back up. Now, uh, sets and rep wise, uh, a nice one. It's important, that, as I just said, the key thing is about um, uh, building up that control. So if you start off with, you can only control five of them, start with five. If you can, we're looking to get up to, you know, that sort of 12 to 15 rep range in the end. Um, and remember that this is a progression from what we did yesterday. So ideally you would have gone through, you know, plenty of uh, strengthening these movement patterns uh, in the easier regressions before you get to here. Cool. So the next one, we're going down into the hamstring curl. Now, just like yesterday, uh, what we had is that we want to try and build up the hamstring strength of the back of your knee because it's going to provide that active scaffolding around your knee joint. So yesterday we had it on the ball and then the foam roller. Now we're moving towards the slide, uh, slide board here. Now I'll just quickly sort of show what we've got here. It's a little bit of padding, a bit of plastic. If you don't have, you can get these on Amazon for about 15 bucks. Otherwise, you can use a, um, you know, a picnic plastic plate, um, go two legs on there. Uh, a frisbee. Yeah, a frisbee, like uh, socks on carpet. There's so many ways of doing this, so don't be put off if you don't have this particular bit of machinery. Um, now what we're doing is we're doing, just like the, the hamstring bridges yesterday, we're pulling the heels up towards the bum and slowly, 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 slowly back out. So this is using, uh, getting your hamstrings nice and strong and that control on the way down is building that good uh, strength throughout the movement. Now, yesterday we had a bit of a uh, question about uh, people who have uh, hyper extend extension issues. So um, I briefly mentioned that you really want to strengthen that control and end range. So now Rad will do a few of those reps where he's just really slowing down with that last bit. So it's still two legs, but bringing up and then slowing down. And then when I was saying that terminal extension, that end range, it's sort of from here to the end where if you can really control that, then you're going to do a good job in controlling your hyperextension. I know your question is more about patella, and that will come in more of the step down sort of work. Good. So that's one progression, pretty challenging. Now, if you're really, uh, if you're finding that fine and easy up to whatever rep range you're working in, depending on your goals, uh, then going to single leg is going to be the next step. And now this is getting pretty hard. <laughs> so really lots of control there. Uh, and you'll definitely be feeling on that hamstring. So that's a really uh, good progression that you can um, move on from what we described yesterday. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah. we'll head back in uh, and get everyone back on the mics. Oh, yes. The um, uh, tumble track sliders come in sets. They're in pairs. Yeah, the, Yanni's saying the tumble track sliders come in uh, pairs. So when you buy them from Amazon, you'll get two of them. And those are one of the best pieces of equipment, one of the best investments we've made um, because they're, they're so cheap yeah. and there's so much you can do with them. Um, it's, yeah, you can particularly, do if, particularly for that eccentric um, strength work and the stretching work. Like yeah. It's just Yeah, it's unreal. Because yeah, it's so much about control of the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the eccentric anything. loading. Um, yeah. I haven't found anything that comes close to it. Like what Phil said, you can do socks on a carpet, you can do frisbees, you can do picnic place, but there's nothing compared to those things. They're yeah. so good. Jump on Amazon, so easy. Yeah, so look, um, if you've just tuned in, hit the like button, please. And also uh, leave a comment with your name and where you're watching from so we can give a little shout out. And um, we're going to go through the biggest mistakes that people make now and the key discussion points for um, for this uh, today's topic. And then we're going to move into a whole bunch of questions that we've had. So if you have any questions, we'll always deal with the live questions first. Um, put them in the comments section and Phil and I will uh, answer them for you. So the, the biggest mistake that we see, um, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, osteoarthritis here. Um, and the biggest mistake that we have is that people believe that an arthritis diagnosis is a reason to reduce or stop physical activity when actually it should prompt more. Yeah, um, it's just so common that you get someone coming in and they're 
like I've seen it quite a few times since I've started at the gym where yeah. someone comes in and like, oh, you know, my surgeon told me, you know, years ago that I've, you know, I'm on track for a knee replacement, so like I shouldn't be doing any of this knee bending stuff. I shouldn't, you yeah. know, like. Yeah, and it's really, it's a real shame. Um, tell me what you think about this, but my understanding and my opinion, the reason why doctors and surgeons are telling people to not do physical activity is because statistically, once people get injured like this, the more physical activity they do, the worse it gets. Because from my understanding, statistically, like if somebody develops tendonitis from golf, like golfer's elbow, and they keep playing golf, it gets worse. So they tell them, you need to just rest for a while and let it recover. Yeah, I think like one interesting thing that I've, um, like one, one great study I love is that looking at how long it takes for scientific research to actually hit what clinicians do, yeah. and that's about 17 years. So people, the things that people are discovering now, usually clinically, takes about 17 years to happen. So if you've got a, a diagnosis, uh, if, if you've talked to a specialist back in the day who was like, oh yes, you know, we must do an, uh, a wash out of your knee and you're gonna need knee replacement and stop doing activity, and you got that information about, you know, 10 years ago, then <laughs> like you're working That's off some really very outdated, old evidence yeah. and the evidence has moved so, so far past that, that there's so much good understanding that if like for arthritis especially, um, it's, it's all about activity. Yeah. It's activity, it's weight loss and it's, um, and strength. So. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and it's definitely something that I've experienced personally when I've gone to a doctor or I think what you call them in America, a physician, is that what they call them? Yeah, yeah. same thing. Physical therapist. Physical, nah, no, I'm talking about a doctor, a GP, <laughs> a general <laughs> practitioner. And the info that they're giving me, I'm like, what, are you kidding me? Like it's the, it's the dumbest, yeah, most I mean, outdated. They have to know so much about so much, like they're keeping people alive, they're doing you know, pathology, they're doing mm. pharmacology, like there's so much to know. And I think you know, for this, like mm. it's just, they just haven't put the time in and, they, yeah. it, and it makes sense like wear and tear more activity equals bad you know uh it, it kind of makes sense to people and then you know you, you then you get into imaging which we're going to go into in a little bit but like when you start to see that there is that um you know there is clear wear of the cartilage then it makes a lot of sense to think like oh well i should, should stop yeah should stop loading it. So. Yeah, yeah, and I like. Let's talk about the first two key discussion points here, because the first two key discussion points I can um, relay my personal experience to, and then we can talk about the third one last. Um, the first one is that motion is lotion. Um, continuing to exercise is the most important thing. Um, and the second one is uh, radiological diagnosis is different to clinical diagnosis. And I can relate to both of those because if I, um, you know, when I got my MRI on my shoulder back in April, I had, uh, so if you're watching this video in the future, that was about seven months ago or six months ago from now. Um, and the clinic, the radio radiological diagnosis was that I had a slap tear. I had a torn supraspinatus, fluid in the bursa, and also uh, degenerative joint disease or the early stages of osteoarthritis. Arthritis. And for a lot of people, that's like a, oh, I've just got to do nothing now and just rest and go and get surgery. Um, for me, totally different. For me, it, it was, uh, my brain immediately goes, wow, what do I need to do in order to really fix this? And the first thing I did was I went to Phil. I spoke to Phil, a, a friend of mine who's a physiotherapist who could um, help um, me to understand what this diagnosis was. And then it was just a matter of understanding how to regress the things that I were doing and how to, uh, what, the, what I was doing and how to remove the things that caused the problem, the injury, because it was, it was an acute injury, except for the uh, arthritis, of course. And, uh, and then how to build from the ground up. And we've actually uh, made, off the back end of this, we've made an amazing program that we're releasing this Friday because we've had so many inquiries about the shoulder rehabilitation program um, that I did. So that's gonna be coming out on Friday. Um, but yeah, yeah what, what are your thoughts like on this? There's, there's kind of quite a lot to unpack here because there's a few different things going on. So first up, uh, like when we're looking at uh, what is arthritis, there's, there's kind of the pain you experience from uh, in, from within the joint, there's, there's more than just what you're seeing in, a, in an image. So when you're going in and you're getting imaging done, like the, the, the imaging is really good at showing morphology, but that doesn't show what's causing pain. And that's a really hard thing for people to um, 
you know, just associate. And certainly when I was learning about it, like it was a really, like it, it challenged what you sort of thought because you're like, oh, you know, if we could just see what's happening inside the joint, then we'd know exactly why people are getting issues. But with pain, and I keep talking about, we should really do a pain science um, chat one time because there's so much, there's, you, you don't have pain receptors that with a certain input have a pain output. So you have um, information that your body gets from nociceptors, which tell you about things, uh, basically, uh, you know, things that are happening to the tissue. You have pain, uh, you have heat, you have touch, you have all these different receptors, which then go into your spinal cord, and at your spinal cord level, they're modulated, uh, which means they're turned up or turned down, and then at your brain, then they go up and into your brain, and then that all that information gets processed by um, your brain and then your thoughts, moods and beliefs all act on it and then your output is pain. So how we can um, kind of bring this to arthritis is if you have this tissue that is, um, you know, you've, you've got this wear and tear in your joint, you stop doing any exercise and you, so your body is not used to any sort of loading and then you're, you know, you get up and you, you try and like, do something you wouldn't usually do, climb up a whole bunch of stairs, then suddenly your body's like, whoa, we've got something different going on here. That goes up your spinal cord um, and up into your brain and your thoughts, moods, beliefs like, oh, I had this, you know, I had some imaging which showed that I've got damage in there and my surgeon told me that I'm gonna need a knee replacement one day and I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm already kind of subconscious, like subconscious about my weight now because I haven't been doing anything mm. and all of these things just turn up, turn up, turn up. Um, your brain's experience of pain, and then so it's this sort of like yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it is and it's a and it's a really um, it's a really nasty road to go down, isn't it? Because when you go down that road that you're describing, it doesn't get better on its own. Like I'm a real firm believer that you know you have to fix yourself. You yeah. know, like you can go to a physiotherapist, you can go to a surgeon, you can go to a doctor, and there's definitely a place for that. I've, clearly, I'm a big believer of it from yeah. the amount of times that you've seen me, um, and Tom Cartwright, our friend who's a chiropractor, but um, there, at the same time, I'm a big believer that the, the time comes where you have to go, okay, I'm gonna own this yeah. now, and I'm gonna do the work and, uh, and fix my body. 100%, mm -hmm. but with like arthritis, especially in knee pain, people go into the classic downward spiral, which is yeah. they stop doing things, and then that means that they are less adapted to load, and then so more, any load causes more pain. Mm -hmm. They um, stop doing yeah. activities, they stop seeing people, so their thoughts, moods, beliefs all negatively impact their pain. Then they increase their weight, which an increased weight through these weight-bearing joints is gonna cause more pain. So it's this downward spiral that yeah. is so common. And, and, and that process that you're describing there it can happen over 10 to 20 years, you know? It's not something yeah. that just happens over a couple yeah, of months. Yeah, yeah, it starts and that's why it's that spiral, it just keeps going and going yeah. and going. Yeah, and I've seen, that, I've seen that happen with some of my good friends over a two decade period where I remember when they were dealing with a little bit of pain yeah. and being a little bit overweight and I was saying to them in our 20s, Start Man, now. you've got to start doing something. You know, yeah. this is only going to get worse. And they just paid it off, paid it off, paid it off. And now in their 40s, they are in a really yeah. bad way and, and desperate, desperate for help. But when you get to that point where you've gone that far, when you're grossly Hard. overweight, your pain is unmanageable, you're having medication that is now affecting your liver and kidneys. And yeah. It, it just, yeah, it's this spiral. spiral. Yeah. I think it's really important now to bring back why motion is lotion. And it probably challenges some people who have... Uh, being like, well, I tried doing an exercise and it just made me feel worse. And I think it's really key to think about, I really like to get um, patients to actually kind of draw their activity over a series of years, so maybe three years, and uh, like go on a paper, have like one access is like, you know, load and one access is time and draw your training. Is it going like this? Is it going boom and bust? Are you being like, oh, I'm motivated, I'm going to do something and then, oh, it hurts, I'm going to do nothing for a long time. And then up and down, is it boom and bust? Or are you gradually increasing, building up load tolerance and building up things over time? I think having that visual representation of being really honest with yourself, drawing it out and thinking like, hey, have I you know, given my body the best chance to get yeah. adapted to load is, is so key. And it really, I think, frames people. And when people sort of say like, oh, you know, I haven't really done much or I've done this boom and bust thing, then that gets me excited because I'm like, hey, there's things we can do here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can optimize this. So. You know, man, you're talking my language. And I want to, I can't remember if it was you or Leroy. Leroy's another friend of ours who's a physiotherapist. Um, 
Did, uh, did was it you that was telling me about that book you were reading about the guy who was talking about how he was researching how people do this boom and bust and how it um, how it negatively affects people and even people that are of a high training age? Yeah, was that you or was uh, that Leroy? It wasn't me, but it's no. something that's so common. Like in physio, it's one of the big things you've got to get people to understand. Is this yeah. like <laughs> yeah? So what? Le so clearly, I'm talking preaching to the choir here. But for those of you that don't know this, um, what my friend was talking about is some recent studies that he'd been reading and Phil ob has obviously learnt it as well uh, about this boom and bust uh, psychology which is that people even people that are really seasoned veterans at training that this idea of where they train three or four weeks really consistently and get to a high level like you know somebody like Yanni and me or Phil that can um, you know squat almost double our body weight or double our body weight but then you go away for a week and you go camping or maybe even eight days or something and you do nothing and your body when you come back from that time your body doesn't remember where it was you have to you, you yeah. have to accept that you've you've spent these like three four weeks going like this and now you've all of a sudden gone like that and you can't expect to get back to that same point that you were there like the climb will be quicker but you have to you know take those steps again don't yeah, you? yeah i think like it when with the pit people that are generally more in the arthritis side of things like their boom and bust is not three weeks of training it's oh i've got to do something 5k run and then oh that hurts nothing yeah and then, oh, i've got it? to do something i'll go into the gym and try and see what other people are doing yeah yeah and yeah, then yeah. nothing yeah. so like Which is even that's, worse. it's quite different but <laughs> yeah i mean the body is just fantastically clever about being like thrifty <laughs> with its resources like yeah. it will send things where it sees it's getting stimulus that it needs use and it'll take things away mm -hmm. if you're not using them so that's yeah. why this sort of idea of you know if you're just going up and down, then you're not giving your body a clear signal of like how much you need and you're just going to be going over your threshold, which is going to cause you pain. It's going to, um, you know, start like your, your body is not load tolerant. So if you do go out and you just like haven't been doing anything for years and then you run like you're going to get knee pain, it could cause more damage because your, your cartilage, your muscles, your bones are not conditioned to that load. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be mm -hmm. problematic. Whereas yeah. if you slowly build things up, then your body has time to send those resources, increase your bone mineral density. Uh, like your cartilage takes a long time to become more load tolerant. Your muscles will get stronger. So the active scaffolding around your joints will get stronger. And you'll be able to do, you know, I have clients who run like across countries like across Iceland yeah. <laughs> that's 570 K she yeah. runs it she doesn't have any knee pain uh, and that's yeah. because she's just gradually yeah. got herself and and developed her body to be able to handle these loads yeah. which so. which really it goes back to the mantra that we have at unity gym and in the UMS which is consistency and patience 100%. is what uh, what produces results it's not the boom or bust mentality it's not the I've been sitting on my butt for ever however long and I'm motivated now now I'm gonna go and do it and then yeah. oh I hurt myself now I'll just sit on my butt yeah. until the pain goes away and then I'll try again it's start and so like going back to what you were saying before when people say oh but when I exercise it hurt that's not a reason to stop exercising no. it's a reason to look further into alternatives, regressions, progressions, um, different things that yeah. you can do, but it is not a reason to stop moving. I mean, I just, I just responded to an email from someone recently where they were saying, um, back in January, they emailed me saying that they were doing our 18 minute stretching routine and it was hurting them. And my response was just take it easy, take some time you and be consistent with it. Like and they, emailed, <laughs> they emailed back to me three or four months later saying, I, um, I'm still getting pain. I think I'm just gonna stop this and go back to doing weightlifting. I'm like, well, well that's not the solution. You can't, you can't say that. You need to still keep, um, you know, exploring your pain, yeah. trying but to figure out what's going to work for you. As I said many yeah. times, human nature is the enemy of, you know, doing the right thing. Like yeah. people just want to get quick results. They want to just yeah. push themselves. So which true. Which I totally understand. Yeah. So but. true. Let's jump into our third um, key discussion point here, which is uh, the third and final one, which is the importance of weight loss and calorie management. And this is a really big one for osteoarthritis in the knee. And it's one of the things that a lot of people really don't understand. Um, and it even goes deep into um, something like calisthenics, like body weight training, where, um, you know, if you're overweight, if you're, um, we'll talk, um, you know, most of our viewers are over in America, so we'll talk in pounds. If you're 50 or 60 pounds overweight, um, you know, that's 25 odd kilos. Um, that if I was to walk around with a 25 kilo weight attached to me doing everything that I did everywhere, I reckon I would have knee pain and lower back pain. I really yeah. do. Yeah, so it's important to remember that your, your knees are a weight bearing joint. Yep. And so it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be bearing as much weight as you have in your body. Yeah. And so 
Uh, that's one aspect of it. And then the other thing is with calorie management, like nutrition, the type of nutrients that you're putting in your body is really key as well because mm -hmm. there are you know, inflammatory processes, there are things that are going to give your um, body more resources to put towards your muscles and your cartilage and your bones, and there are going to be uh, other calories that you put in that are empty calories yeah, that are just going to go yeah, and they'll be giving you is energy <laughs> and a lot of rubbish so yeah you know we're not the nutrition station so we're not no, going to go deep into that but it's so so easy yeah. to google One, you know foods that cause inflammation and foods that um are good to, at reducing inflammation and, uh, yeah and i think just like it don't overcomplicate it <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so simple people can't people overcomplicate um um, everything. Uh, everything. <laughs> but nutrition especially. And people yeah. say to us, oh, how should I eat this way? Or how should I eat yeah. that way? And th there's a reason why we ad are advocates for the modified Mediterranean diet. It's because it's the diet that's been around that has decades and decades of good gold standard research papers on it to prove that it is a healthy way to eat. So um, the more radical ways of eating that people are coming out with now, like keto and carnivore and vegan and things like that, it's kind of a watch this space thing. We'll see what happens yeah, over the next some 15 say years. It, you can't, people can't get great results of that. But yeah, yeah it's, 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 just, it's just that it's a watch this space for us. And so we want to we wanna go off what mo more people have been saying. And if you look at the modified Mediterranean diet, it's, it's not hard to understand it's just eat a little bit of this 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 don't eat too much of anything and avoid all the shit you know eat yeah. whole foods and again like this is enough like go and l look deep into you know people who are real experts on this but i think one really good key takeaway is that with your weight if you lose there's lots there's, uh, there's studies that show that if you lose 10 percent of your body weight then that can halve your pain yeah so like yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's huge. It's uh, it's insane. It's it's just insane what it does, and we've seen it um, time after time. We've had members in the gym that have lost. Um, 40 pounds or you know 18 kilograms and kept it off and people that have had chronic knee pain for 20 years knee pain gone yeah yeah so it's a really big part don't discard and that last what um, I, key discussion what is point. also so good about when you're when you start managing what you eat and you start to get little gains there and you start to get this like sort of really tangible feedback of uh, weight loss it really helps with your mindset about reversing that spiral because yeah. as we talked about that downward spiral like there's also momentum, momentum you get when you start to improve your things. Like yep. if you start eating better, you start feeling better, you start having less pain when you oh, walk man. and you notice things and like- And it you, empowers you. you. Uh, it empowers you for so everything else. Like, with all of this, it's momentum and that consistency is what drives momentum. Yeah, another mantra that we have at Unity Gym is be 1% better every day. That's all you aim for. You just aim to be 1% better than yesterday. Um, and if you do that, but you never go backwards, then people will look at it and think, oh, well, it's gonna take me a couple of years. Yeah, it is. It is gonna take you a couple of years. It's You cannot turn around bad health overnight. 365 like, percent better a year in, is an absurd amount of yeah, That's <laughs> exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. So let's talk about the key insight from today's show. And I'm gonna say this uh, really concisely, and then I want you to give me in 30 seconds your uh, input on the key insight. So the key insight from today's show is to make sure you're participating in the right type of exercise and you're actively improving your nutrition. We believe supervised strength training plus proper calorie management is the best strategy. Uh, anything is better than nothing. Yeah. So I think like we're talking best strategy here. Ideally, again, as a trainer, have like really good sort of uh, direction about your early exercise because your early exercise experience is going to really inform your long-term exercise experience. But any exercise is better than none. So if you just love running and running is what you want to do, running can be safe. But start with something like a couch to 5K program. Don't just, you know, go straight, <laughs> straight into it, run. exactly. Yeah. So uh, whatever you do, anything is better than nothing. So we want to reverse that spiral, but the best thing you can do is work with someone who knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. work with a, with a physio, work with a physical therapist to start off with, move on to personal trainers and just keep moving forward and watch your weight. Yeah. Yanni, do you want to bring your computer down here so I can see um, any comments? Have we got any questions or anything? Not yet. I'll read them out, though. I've got a mic here. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, if you've just tuned into the show, please make sure you hit the like button and uh, just leave a comment with your name and where you're watching from. It really helps the algorithm for us to get this content out there. And also just so that we can give you a shout out and we know who's yeah, watching. Yeah, it was really fun yesterday. It was like lots of chat. And yeah. Then, some yeah. days we don't get much chat at all and some days we get heaps. And the shows are always better when you are asking us questions. So any questions that you have, we're going to answer them for you right now so get them in uh, because if there's no questions then by the time I've finished uh, answering the questions from comments in the last 24 hours then the show will be over. Well just quickly I don't think I really totally explained the clinical versus radiological diagnosis oh, okay, cool. yeah, piece yeah, let's go. and so let's go. I think yeah we, we briefly mentioned that people often go get uh, x-rays and they see like uh, they can see that there's a difference between um, you know there's reduced joint space and 
the report comes back and says you have like either early stages or advanced or whatever arthritis. But that doesn't necessarily, like those morphological changes do not equal the amount of pain you experience. And um, yeah, I really loved it in the lecture series we did on um, arthritis in uni. They had like two sets of knees, one from one person who you looked at it and you're like, oh, that's yeah. pretty ugly. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the bone on bone that it, you know, people really mm. get stuck in their head. And then you saw another one, which was, uh, you know, some very, very like minor joint space narrowing. And, and then it sort of had like the, then you had to guess the pain experienced by either one of those people. And the, it ended up being that the person who had that bone on bone was like a two out of 10. And the person who had that minor joint space narrowing is that um, uh, was like an eight out of 10. Wow. So like it, it, it's, it's, if you, if you scanned everyone's knees in the population, you would find these morphological changes in like everyone over the yeah. age of 20, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. especially 40 plus, yeah. like it really, like everyone will have changed their knees, but not everyone has, has pain. pain. Yeah. And so it's mm -hmm. so key that like if just because it, like don't get imaging done unless there's a reason to do it in the first place work with a you know a good physio or a doctor or, like who knows what they're talking about like you don't need to get imaging unless it's 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 warranted and if you do like take it with a grain of salt like keep moving and for s so many people like who have the this pain and they're on track to go and like their their heart set is set on getting a total knee replacement. They're in pain a lot of the time anyway. So like, do some exercise and see what happens. Like you're in pain anyway. Yeah. Like, try something. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're in pain anyway. Yeah. It's not going to hurt. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So let's have a look at these uh, comments from the last. Before um, we get started, smash up the likes, folks. Yep. We've got eight people watching live and one like. So that I yeah, please hit the like button, guys. You, you literally or... just have to go click like that. It does so much for us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> so let's uh, let's have a look here. So Ahmed Noktrashi on the how to fix scapular winging step by step guide has said, how many repetitions? How many times a day? How many days a week? I love your enthusiasm, brother, but I really can't answer that question because I don't don't know which exercises you're talking about um, you need to be a little bit more specific and we also um, don't know anything about you the key to like your sets reps everything is uh, yeah goals. what are you trying to fix like, what are your goals well what are your goals yeah what are yeah, your goals like, I mean you could do this once and, and a week training age How yeah yeah your training age yeah you could you could do this um, uh, once a week if you're an absolute beginner and get a phenomenal result but if you've been training for as long as me and you wanted to make a change in your body I'd need to do that stuff two or three times a week and do between three and five sets of it so and are you a long distance rower like do you need that muscular endurance or are you a power lifter or an Olympic yeah, weightlifter yeah. where you need that sort of yeah, so, explosive strength so, so give us really some more info and anybody else that wants to ask us questions on this stuff will answer them but the more info you give us like we really need to know how long have you been training for what are your um, symptoms why do you want to do this and what are your goals what are you hoping to achieve um, okay let's move on just, uh, just quickly on that um, uh, uh, one of the main reasons why we don't get very specific on sets and rep ranges in our tutorials when we go out there is because it's a generalized um, uh, demonstration and things like training age and goals really are key in program periodization methods and you know if we give one person a a general sort of broad idea it's it's not really that useful for someone who's really experienced you know if we're telling everyone to do 12 reps and you've been training in this sort of scenario for 10 years then 12 reps is way too much for you so hopefully yeah if you want to ask us more specific then make sure that you're a little bit more specific in the question yeah mm -hmm. humans aren't robots like everyone's got different things going on everyone's got different goals and experience so yeah yeah it, I, it, love it, it, it. I love that I love that okay so uh, Yuri Menezes uh, Menezes uh, on our how to increase overhead mobility video. This video is going uh, gangbusters. It's a really, really good video. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Uh, how to increase overhead mobility, step-by-step -step guide. Uh, and Yuri is asking, he says, man, the position you simulated at one minute is exactly my problem and I'm really suffering from it. I can't improve my snatch, uh, that he's talking about the Olympic snatch there, and it's impossible to perform an overhead squat because my hips go- he's talking about the Olympic snatch. Yeah, because my uh, hips go forward whenever I have some weight above my head no matter how focused I am on my posture um, listen Yuri uh, this really relates to what Phil just said there um, you've got to approach your training as a marathon not a sprint and you've got to think like I'm a big believer of starting with the end in mind like think about where do you want to be in 10 years from now or 20 years from now do you want to be a has-been do you want to be someone that's got a whole bunch of videos showing them what they could do 10 years ago but your body's just trash now and all you've got is a bunch of stories to show from 
moment? Or do you want to be somebody that continually improves over time? And if you want to be in that first category, then you're definitely watching the wrong channel because we are not advocates of that. Um, I don't want to give anybody advice that's going to just get them somewhere to be able to do something in three months but trash their body. So hopefully you're in the second category. And if that's the case, start looking at your training as something that where you've got time on your side. It's not you're, you're not in a race. You don't need to impress anybody. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. So the way that I approach my training is I'll work towards a move. I can't do it for whatever reason. And then I'll assess myself and I'll, I'll think to myself, do I have, is this a lack of strength, a lack of flexibility, a combination of the both or a lack of uh, coordination and just practice of repetition? And then from there, you reverse engineer a plan and then you just follow the plan. And when you've, you've come up with that plan, detach yourself from the goal. Forget about it. Don't worry about doing an overhead squat. Don't worry about doing a snatch. Just follow the plan and watch yourself get better and better. It's the only way that I've managed to rehabilitate my shoulder and many other injuries because if I was only ever focused on my goal on what I'd be able to achieve I'd go crazy because when you're working on things like a one arm chin up like I was when I developed tendonitis and all of a sudden I can't even do normal pull ups if I was still focusing on doing a one arm chin up I would be so miserable and so upset and um, same with things like with my shoulder you just um, that's that's my opinion that's what I think yeah I think that is so true and such good advice for 95% of the population and if you are someone who has like a specific comp and it's something that is super meaningful for you you're in part of a team you're part of like you've, you've got you know in the olympics coming up like and there is a time frame on it then certainly like you have high stakes here so go and work with someone who can go into the specifics they can watch you do things and they can really fine tune things because like i 100 percent get it for like i've played a lot of competitive sport and i've had tournaments in mind where it's like well i have like a playing world championship yeah, like yeah, i need to get yeah like this sorted by this amount of time and i it's it's a, a like you know, you know that maybe this will cause me some like longer term issues, but like it's really important to you as, as your identity. Like, and if that's the case, then do more than just watch a YouTube video. Go and absolutely, work with someone absolutely. who can in, work on specifics. In the very least, join our UMS online coaching program where for, um, you know, 40 US dollars a month, um, you can work with us directly. I mean, in the very least. But if, if, you, don't have, if you don't have those kind of goals, then, then yeah, follow the Yeah, but again, 95% of the people just like, <laughs> Yep. Think about what's important to you. Yeah, cool. Okay, so Maria Salvara on the Press to Handstand Epic Press Handstand Strength Routine has said, I'm new to your channel, but gosh, you are really good. Thank you so much, Maria. I think I'm good as well. Marie, sorry, I think I'm good. Uh, it's good to know that other people do as well. Um, if you're from America, I'm, I've, I... Uh, I'm learning that Americans don't have the same level of sarcasm or understanding of sarcasm as Australia. So that was a sarcastic remark. I was just <laughs> joking. <laughs> um, I think you're right. But gosh, you are really good. I always like to watch the mobility. Balance uh, exercise. Uh, the, I always like to watch the mobility and balance exercise better than all the rest. Can your gym move to Melbourne? Ha <laughs> ha, just kidding. Um, we have had a lot of people ask to move to Melbourne, so uh, maybe we will one day, Marie. Okay. Let's see. Well, um, hang on. On, that, on that note, I'm just turning my mic back up. Uh, Phil said, no, we can't move to Melbourne because he's got too many ex-girlfriends down yeah, there. Yeah, Phil's, uh, Phil's got a lover in every city, but apparently he's got about 10 of them in Melbourne. So, Ex. Um, <laughs> Okay, now we're moving on to Leah Nash. Cannot wait for this. Have we have we gone over this one, Yanni? Cannot wait for... No, we haven't. Cannot wait for this program. I've been traveling for nearly a year, but home soon and can't wait to get into this. That's the hip pain uh, series that we did last week. Uh, and then we're moving on to Phil Kalesi or Kalesi. Um, Kalesi. Yeah. No? <laughs> Uh, on the knee pain exercises, best rehab strategy from Monday. Looking forward uh, for the hamstring part. Thanks, uh, Phil. Hope you watch that. Yeah, and we'll keep developing the hamstrings tomorrow, so we're moving on to even more advanced. Yeah, things, yeah. So. Tomorrow's going to be a good one. Watch this whole week. It's going to be a really good show for knee pain. Um, Phil Burns on the same video is saying, Hey, Yanni and Phil, thanks for going hard on knees. Both my knees are bone on bone, so most of the exercises... There's that word, bone on bone. People love it. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, so Sorry. most of the exercises in the UMS so far are too much to take. Take. The only surgical option I have been offered, but reluctantly due to my age, only 45 years young, is total knee replacement to both knees. Could you also try to touch on TKR surgeries? What's total knee replacement. Total knee replacement surgeries. Um, and then it's cut off there, unfortunately, Phil. Yeah, so hopefully you've got a lot out of today's episode, because uh, I think we've covered yeah, most we have. of Yeah, I think of today's that episode, we've really and answered your questions. Yeah. If you've got any more questions, ask them, Phil. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, and also Phil, I know you're a part of, I'm pretty sure you're a part of our UMS online coaching yeah. tribe. Um, more specific questions like this, brother, um, put them straight into that uh, Facebook group because that's where Yanni and me uh, and Phil um, and the rest of the tribe go a lot deeper and you can get a lot more interaction, you know, feedback, ask follow-up questions. Yeah, so with some, like a lot of the mobility kind of base, like really deep um, squats which, or like deep mobility work for deep knee flexion that is, uh, are probably going to be quite challenging. So hopefully you've got a bit out of what we've done um, this week so far with just like the step ups and um, developments from there. And then you can kind of, like there's just so much strength what you can do um, where you're, you can up the weight a little bit, decrease the range and start to build up that dynamic scaffolding and build up that strength and um, go from there. Just quickly guys, uh, Michael P, who jo he's a regular on the show, uh, welcome Michael, has said, well said, Rad, risk reward and longevity should be the approach for the majority of people. Yeah, thanks Michael. I couldn't believe in that more. I'm 41 years old now and my goals from, 40, from 21 to 31 to 41 have changed a lot. And since I've adopted this idea that there is no race, I'm not, I'm not racing against the clock. I just want to be the best that I can be. I'm getting better than I've ever been. I honestly am. Um, I just weighed myself the other day. I've put on four kilos of muscle in the last two months. Now officially heavier than Yanni. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and that's due to just coming out of the um, infant stages of rehab and starting back up with barbells again um, and just being consistent, you know, doing things the right way. My shoulder feels great. I'm not lifting nearly as much as I used to lift, but I'm getting great results and I'm, I'm not worried about uh, racing against the clock. I'm just worried about being the best that I can be. So um, now we're moving forward again. Uh, we've got someone named The Terrible Puddle who's commented on the how to increase overhead mobility again, saying, here after I slipped the disc due to poor overhead mobility. Look, we feel you, but we have had a lot of people come through here with slipped discs and come out the other side stronger. Um, Again, with just like the, as I was talking about with knee imaging, if you scanned everyone in the world, <laughs> like yeah. there would be so many people with disc issues. Um, not to say that they can't cause some real problems, um, but like- They can also be benign. They can be yeah. benign. Yeah. So again, work, work with someone who knows what they're doing, work with a physio, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you should still be able to do plenty. Yeah. Um, and our last one here for today, A. Osserto on the how to do a frog stand exercise tutorial is saying the frog stand, for those of you that don't know, it's one of the real uh, basic versions of a, a, towards a tuck planche or a, a straddle planche. So question, when I do the lean, I will, I try with all I have to maintain my elbows as straight as I can, but once my feet naturally lifts off the ground and my body is now all on my arms, my elbows instinctively uh, bend over and I stay in the lean position of the thumbnail. The thumbnail is the bent arm frog stand position. Is that okay to happen? Also, if not, is there a way for me to improve my elbow strength so it won't and then it's cut off? But uh, I can answer that question. Um, we were going through that today in our straight arm strength workout at Unity Gym and I was helping a lot of people with exactly the same problem. Now in my experience, the first thing you have to say is have you done the preliminary work? Have you done enough scapular push-ups, which is what we use as the first progression um, towards the planche? And have you worked on the bent arm frog stand? Have you got a good 30 second bent arm frog stand? Because the idea of that is the first one, the scapular push-ups teaches you how to create strength through protraction. So uh, developing all the muscles that create uh, protraction in the scapula. And the second one, the bent arm frog stand builds up um, wrist tolerance to be able to handle the straight arm frog stand and then the uh, band assisted tuck planche and the tuck planche. Now, if you haven't built up enough tolerance in the wrist and the shoulders in the, in the scapular protractors, then it's gonna be virtually impossible for you to do a straight arm uh, frog stand. So that's the first thing. Let's say that you have uh, done the preliminary work and you've worked your way up to a point where you now are qualified to do that move. The only thing that's holding you back is fear. Um, it's you're afraid of what you're going to potentially do to yourself. And it's a real fear, uh, you know, you can hurt yourself doing this kind of stuff. You have to be um, progressive and careful. And my um, recommendation to you is this. Firstly, make sure that your hands are turned out so that your index finger is pointed to roughly a 45 degree angle. Secondly, splay the fingers as wide as you can get them. And thirdly, turn the elbows inwards so that you're really locking them out. 
Make sure that the knee is above the elbow, uh, so it can be anywhere right up near the armpit or down near the elbow. That depends on the length of your spine versus the length of your femur. It's going to be different from person to person. And then all you're going to do is lean your weight forward and feel like the only angle change comes in the wrist, not in the elbow. And just keep going forward until you feel that the elbow wants to bend and then go back. Apply pressure on the back of the arm with the knee so it keeps the elbow straight and gradually you'll go forward enough that the weight will just lift off your feet and you'll be able to balance on your hands. But there is a point where you just have to trust yourself that you're not going to hurt yourself as long as you're not experiencing excessive pain in your wrist and especially pain that doesn't go away the next day. Like if you do it and you think, oh, my wrist is sore and then the next day your wrists are, have a dull ache just from doing nothing. And um, the other thing that I would say is get a yoga mat, fold it over or a cushion, put it right in front where your head is so that even if you fall, you're only going to fall that far and your head's going to hit a cushion. Um, and that will really help you get nice forward with that. That's as detailed as it gets. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did bring out one thing that I did want to also mention with training through arthritis and that's that a little bit of pain is fine. Um, yep. Yeah, like when you're starting out with uh, working with yeah, knee pain, like if it is just you know general osteoarthritis, then you know three to four out of ten, as long as it doesn't really super flare up the next day. And if it does, that's fine. Just back it off and continue on that upward spiral. So yeah. just an important point to. Awesome. Now, for those of you that have made it this far in the video, if you haven't hit the like button and left us a comment, what are you doing? Help us out. Give us a like. And uh, if you haven't started working with us yet, um, you can get four weeks free of our online coaching. This is an unbelievable offer. We're giving it away uh, for you guys, for our loyal viewers, uh, those people that watch, make it right to the end of the video. And you can literally join our full online coaching program for free for four weeks. You have to go through the normal sign up process um, but if you want to quit you just quit there's no questions asked you won't be charged if you stop before the end of the four weeks and you can cancel at any time so make sure you jump on and do that and uh, besides that we will see you tomorrow where we're going to go even deeper into this big issue called knee pain health